All right, welcome to Corian Concepts live stream on this April 16th, 2024. What a crazy world we live in, especially here in Canada. This one will have a little bit of Canadian specific content tonight just because, well, let me just say it, this country is just going to shit. I don't know how to better describe it. Uh, but we all have our problems in our own countries, I understand, so I don't spend too much time on it, but there's some relevant information here to share i think thank you for oh why did he say audio is sounding bad uh oh what have we got going on with the audio all right just hang on it's always something okay that's all set that's all set huh uh, I know what the problem is. Just one second. All right, I figured it out. All right. Welcome to the thrilling world of blockchain staking. Today we dive into the vast sea of Korean Network, a delegated proof of stake blockchain that serves up some striking rewards for staking your tokens. Picture it as earning interest on your crypto while contributing to the security and decentralization of the network. Tempting, isn't it? But remember, with great rewards come great responsibilities and potential risks. Corium Network uses a slashing mechanism where stakers may lose a portion of their stake tokens if the validator they delegate to indulges in malicious activities or fails to perform their duties. So be responsible, stay educated, and distribute your tokens wisely across at least three reputable validators. Now let's dive into the how-to of staking Corium using the Cosmo Station wallet. Step 1. To get started, you'll need to create or import a wallet on Cosmo Station. Remember to keep your mnemonic phrase safe and secure. Step 2. Once you have a wallet, you'll need to buy some Corium tokens. You can do this through a crypto exchange that supports Corium. If you have Corium on the XRP ledger, use the SolidX bridge by Sologenic to transfer your Corium tokens to U Cosmo Station wallet. It is fast, reliable and free. Caution though, you will not be able to move these tokens back to XRP ledger once bridged. Step 3. After acquiring your Corium tokens, transfer them to your Cosmo Station wallet. Step 4. Within the Cosmo Station wallet, find the delegate section. Here you'll find a list of validators to choose from. Remember to choose wisely. Corium Community DAO Discord and regular X Spaces is a good place to learn from and interact safely with the community. Step five. After choosing your validators, select the amount of Corium tokens you want to stake and confirm that. All right, we'll cut that short. Just, I, it needs an update. We got a new bridge since that uh, last video I made was posted. All right, mic check. I think we got her sorted out. Sorry about that. Give me a thumbs up or a like there. I think I got it. Right on. Much better audio. Thanks again, baby. Appreciate it. Save the day. All right. I'm streaming this on X and YouTube simultaneously. I'm here willing to answer any questions or discuss anything that you might find important that I might have missed on the day's news so comments are open appreciate everybody that's joined me already here wasted a bit of time already so let's just get into it and just a reminder if you need to learn about staking on the corium network the new bridges uh, that go between the xrpl corium and the ibc ecosystem head to our discord ton of value there had a little bit of spam today a little bit of problem with some inappropriate spamming so uh took care of that little fire there so uh always an adventure in this space let me tell you but uh aquariumcommunity.com has all the links to all our social medias and things like that all right super ledger podcast we have created a x account just for the podcast it is kind of blowing up here it might outgrow my channel you never know but uh just the same, head over there, give us a follow. Uh, be a bit before we transition over, but uh, we will start being active on this account in preparation for that. 
And speaking of the podcast, this weekend I'm pleased to say I'm going to have my web 3me I am an early adopter in this project and I'm pretty excited about it. I, I asked to be an early adopter just because I think it is a cool platform and I think a lot of people will find some value in it and hopefully reaches mass adoption be a lot better than current things available in my opinion anyway so look forward to that we'll be getting that link out here probably tonight for that space and i want to give a special shout out to terraspaces.org uh, they cover the ibc ecosystem and they picked up on our podcast because we do cover a fair bit of ibc info on there and uh, just to say uh, thank you thank you for getting that shared out there and uh, they work on donations so if you want to support them or thank them for following what we're doing and sharing it with the cosmos ecosystem i encourage you to do so all right let's get to the markets total crypto market cap 2.258 trillion here today gold is trading at 2381 silver has pulled back a bit $28.13 DXY 106.287 you can see it's on a tear here all of a sudden as crypto pulls back Bitcoin trading at 63,888 XRP fell below the 50 cent mark there again today let's clean that up a little bit there we go whoops move the line there doesn't matter I haven't used those in quite a long time but uh, just the same think we might be coming back to tap this uh, trend line in the bottom here down that 41 cent range that's just my opinion not financial advice and uh, if you look at Corium it is uh, doing about the same as the market there at 11.8 cents but one thing to note look at the volume it has completely been gutted um, so I don't know what's happened there it was uh, abnormally high for quite some time but uh, since the 15th of March it has been absolutely gutted so um, that's gonna have to change obviously so uh, we need some more volume we need some more transactions on the network and uh, encourage everybody to help grow this community by sharing videos like this and supporting those sharing the Corium ecosystem content all right Sologenic has pulled underneath 12 cents huge wick there yesterday down to 9.96 cents uh so eyes on that expect some more volatility in the market ahead and adam trading at eight dollars and 13 cents after a big pullback itself omniflex 10.9 cents now it wasn't too long ago it wasn't too long ago i was almost ready to FOMO in you know it's hitting that 50 cent mark it's getting a little worried it's going to run away from me but uh waited now I'm in a position I could dollar cost average in nicely on quite a few different projects that have caught my eye lately and uh Coinbase as you can see it's getting its share too much like many other crypto related stocks that I follow there all right another reminder pulsera second snapshot of four is coming up on the 18th so make sure you have your corium balance where it should be and if you're unsure of what's needed i encourage you to head to pulsera telegram group head to our discord we're more than willing to help also but uh, plenty of discussion in the Pulsera group there what needs to be done in preparation for that as you can see here Pulsera is trading at 1.73 cents USDC just shy of 3 million liquidity provided on the platform 24-hour trading volume has gone back to a little bit more stable at 175,000 in the last 24 and just checking with the XRP pools, I'm kind of watching the 
liquidity since the AMM went live uh, because there's obviously a lot of activity over there. Uh, so you see we have just over a million XRP locked up. So we definitely had some uh, flow back to the XRPL or into other assets uh, based on what I'm seeing here. And it makes sense. Uh, everybody's been waiting a long time for some upgrades to the XRP ledger. Finally got it. People are going to definitely play with it. All right. And as you can see here, the last proposal was also rejected. And that was due to not meeting the threshold. As you can see, the turnout was only 12.86%. Those that did turn out were in favor of it generally, but not enough interest, participation, or desire to pass this proposal. So as you can see, the rewards should stay as they were. All right, I see a few in the comments. Welcome, glad you can join us. Let me fix this. I have to adjust something here momentarily. Where are we here? There we go. Sorry, I had to uh, have a drink there. I had some caught in the throat, but uh, we will get back into it. So yeah, I just want to say hello to a few that have joined us. Bibby, of course, here. Leisure Suit or Leisure Suit Kitty, welcome. Big Max in the house, welcome. We sure had some fun today. Swat and flies in Discord. Zero cool, welcome. That was a badass uh, graphic that you did the other day for the podcast. Core Marshall's here. Awesome. Good to see you. Let me see if I can find that because uh, that was uh, just awesome. I'm going to put that actually on the Super Ledger podcast uh, page here, I think. Let's see what I can find here. I'll give these guys some charts to look at while I'm trying to find it. Oh, we'll dive into that later. I'll pull it up later. But thanks again, uh, Zero Cool. That was an awesome uh, graphic you made for the podcast. I'll share it here a little later in the show. Freddie, welcome. Good to see you. All right. Where the heck was I? Here we go. We'll head over to Smart Stake Analytics. And checking in with the Core Invalidators and Network. Currently, there's 319,749,000 Corium staked, representing 55.8% of the circulating supply. And there is 1.7 million currently being undelegated. You can see the Corium Community DAO has 3.7 million in voting power. 1.15 percent of the vote and 269 unique delegators welcome to the new ones that have joined us here recently we thank you for your support encourage you to head to our discord to maximize your value with staking with us okay map of zones corium ibc network as you can see we have a new peer on the list here i just noticed that now and composable there it is pretty sure that's the new one yeah for sure yeah right on so we have a new peer on there making it 14 composable uh we can dive into that a little bit later in fact i might write myself a reminder so i don't forget about that because I think uh, there's a possible story of interest there to discuss. And that's what's great about tools like Map of Zones and Smart Stake Analytics. It just gives you such a, a great read on what's going on in the ecosystem. And uh, just at a glance, you know, like I didn't even see that until uh, just now when I showed it to you. And bam, powerful. A whole whole other topic to discuss here now because of that. 
Anyways, back to business, 107,000 in, in volume in the last 24 hours. You can see the market cap of Aquarium, 67,704,000. And the trading volume in the last 24 hours, 1.65 million. Not much change there. The inflation rate, 15.1%. 573,100,000 on chain supply, 64, 64 validators. And we're just about at 6,650 unique delegators. All right. Taking a look at the AMMs on XRP scan. As you can see, steady growth. As far as the XRP being locked up into the pools there, we see we're at 2.268 million XRP in there. So that's good to see. Activity is consistently growing. 208 total assets, 202 unique tokens, 184 XRP pairs, and 323 pools. Seems like a lot of pools to try and navigate to, but um, it's great to see. I haven't had a chance to play in it yet. I'm going to dip my toes into it here soon just for the sake of doing so. But uh, what do we have here? I'm not too sure if I refresh this one lately. Let's give that a refresh. All right. So you got half a million in liquidity in the USDC XRP pool. Just over 200,000 in the solo XRP pool. 24 hour volume leading that USDC XRP pool. Good to see that. Uh, but pretty damn quiet otherwise. A um, little bit of activity down in Flare. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. So we pop in, take a look at what Sologenix is uh, showing on their site. You can see the fee structures here. Still really surprised. Um, the fees fees seem extremely high for, for a DEX. I don't know. Um, just my experience, I guess. Um, but uh, you guys let me know what you think. Those that you have used DEXs out there. Uh, usually there's like a point zero involved in on trading fees on swap fees, but um, it's good to see it's being used. That's the main thing. Got some movement, and once people start exploring the benefits of DeFi, they're likely to look at where they can maximize their newfound tools and interests. All right, Canadians. Uh, I think most of us knew it, but we're getting screwed pretty bad here. Once again, our government certainly does not represent most Canadians that I've come to know and love over my 50 years on the planet here. Uh, Mario Nafal says here, Canadian bank asked customer what they'll spend their money on. A conversation when a man went into a local bank and asked for emergency cash withdrawal. Let's see if this will allow me to play it here. Okay. Well, wait, I don't understand. What are you talking about? So, I think it could give you a bank. Nah, that's not going to do it. But I don't really need it to play because I have experienced this personally uh, at the Royal Bank of Canada uh, twice in the last few months on withdrawals under $4,000. Uh, they wanted full explanation what the money was being used for and why. And... Uh, it was pretty uncomfortable experience, let me tell you. Um, you know, when you're just trying to take your money out of the bank, and and I know people are going to say as soon as you give it to the bank, it's not your money anymore. Uh, that's why I'm bringing light to this. It, it's more important than ever to be your own bank. These corrupt governments, you know, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, you never know what you're going to wake up to. Best to get prepared and understand these tools available to us, uh, because you might not want to be part of the new system that you know we're all helping uh develop and pay for here so uh, make sure you keep decentralized be your own bank at the forefront of your mind and your support of projects because uh it's getting a little hectic out there in canada as far as trying to get your own money 
out of the bank account when you need it. Heading over to table salt sharing and related story, real estate speculators in Canada just got KO'd. That's right. They are proposing in this federal budget that will likely pass um, 66% capital gains tax inclusion rate on non-principal property sales. And they're going after crypto and they're going after everything. If you're making over 250K, they are coming after you hard. And this means 66% of your profit is taxed as income. Yeah, it just keeps getting better and better in this country. Um, but, you know, maybe that's a sign that everything's going to pump. Uh, we got a massive real estate bubble in this country. Um, you know, you look at the price of gold, silver commodities. They're going to start pumping money and they're going to find a reason to start pumping money. And if it's war, famine, who knows, but they're going to figure out a way to inject a whole bunch more money in this system to cover their debt, kick the can down the road some more. So prepare yourselves out there. I have a feeling it's probably going to get worse instead of better. And that's why I'm trying to remind everybody to be your own bank and get yourself some technology that will help protect some of your assets, keep some of your assets outside of this corrupt system. All right. TD Leaker here sharing. Here's the top 10 ways in which costs or taxes increase according to Canada's budget 2024. This will be the last bit on this Canadian topic and, and we'll get on to other things here. Uh, but number one, obviously, the capital gains tax that I just mentioned. Number two, digital services tax, a new tax ensuring digital businesses that monetize Canadian users' data are taxed, applicable from 2024 for revenues earned from January 2022. Imagine that, hey? Luxury tax, introduction of a new tax on luxury goods, including private jets, yachts, and luxury vehicles. Tobacco and vaping products, excise duty increase, increase federal excise duties on tobacco by $5.50 a carton and 12% on vaping products. I've quit smoking now for, I think it's uh, three, four, I think four years. And uh, back then, I think it was like 17, 18 bucks a pack of cigarettes then. So I, I couldn't even tell you what it is now. I can't even imagine. So um syntax we call it i guess um public debt charges increase in public debt charges due to higher borrowing requirements and interest rates gst on carbon emissions right here we go implementation of gst on carbon emission credits starting in 2024 so i mean they're taxing the taxes here now uh, increase in public sector wage costs due to salary increases for federal employees following new collective bargaining agreements. Environmental compliance costs, new fees and fines for non-compliance with environmental regulations. I wonder who's going to enforce that. Uh, air traveler security charge, increase in the air traveler security charge to fund enhanced airport security measures. And number 10, alcohol excise tax. Yes, if you thought you're going to drink these problems away, they're going to freaking tax you on that too. There's just no end, no end in sight. Uh, and Wendy Morris here, uh, sorry if you dragged me into this conversation, but uh, perfectly said, investment money is going to rush out of Canada. What a doom loop. Exactly. Capital is going to leave this country at a faster rate than it has. And how appropriate... My Latin Life here shares how to flee Canada. Number one, get a Paraguay residency. Number two, open a US LLC. And number three, pay the Canadian exit, exit tax if you have significant assets. So something to think about there, my fellow Canadians. Like I said at the start, this country is going to hell in a handbasket in a hurry. All right, on to... Problems across the world in Dubai. We have the Corium Sologenic team and many other blockchain representatives in the Web3 space in Dubai for a world blockchain event. And it is getting flooded, something severe. Coin holder posts here, rain, sleet, or snow. I will continue to expand the Corium ecosystem 
failure will never be an option build on corium as you can see how on there standing by some flooded waters it's a pretty nice car to be floating down the street and you can see coin holder hard at work we appreciate your efforts out there it was great to see you again in la just a month or so ago all right now one says here he's excited to share share that 230 students have applied to join the Corium ambassador program we'll soon roll out a new dashboard aimed at helping them thrive and grow within the ecosystem that's great to see they had an event today and uh, that was in geez i can't remember where it was but uh they did have another workshop today at, at the university so that's about their fourth one <clears throat> and excuse me and um it's just a great initiative i had uh, the u of calgary blockchain society on a few weeks ago in the podcast and they provided a ton of great value and uh it just highlighted a lot of important things I encourage you to check out that interview if you haven't already all right what's going on in the comments here zero cool no you did not win anything uh but hey, I tell you what, I am going to talk to you about uh, doing something with that. And uh, maybe, maybe we'll uh, work out a deal on something there. So that's a uh, it's good, good image. We're going to we're going to do something with that, I think. All right. Back to Core Ecosystem News. Core Pulse coming soon. CSV and tax data extraction, simplify tax reporting and compliance with our data extraction capabilities extract csv data and tax related information for user transactions effortlessly so good to hear that i reached out to them here recently again for an update they said they're, they're working hard trying to get it out it's coming be patient and uh tax time's here so that's why i was asking i uh, appreciate all the efforts they're putting into this it's going to be a valuable tool once it goes live all right here's a powerful statement from the idc ecosystem see four years going on here as zero exploits not a one powerful stuff secure and battle tested exactly exactly and that's great to see okay and for those that you or those that listened to the podcast last weekend we had lunar space on as you're aware they are launching the LSE token on outbid on an outbid campaign and some exciting news you've seen I was sharing these uh, drop camp referrals and and links for you guys to jump in and uh, they uh, just had their airdrop powerful airdrop and we'll have a little breakdown here as we all know the airdrop to arch stakers via drop cap happened yesterday April 15th the results 2.379 million axv tokens out of 3 million have been claimed 5300 active users were utilizing astro vault yesterday and 3300 of them were new that's a powerful response uh, if you're wondering what you can do with the axv tokens we've got the answers you can enjoy the results of jumping into various pools offered to enjoy some juicy APRs. You can put your tokens to work in farms with no lockup period or risk of impermanent loss on our farms tab at astrovault.io farm. And you get to be part of the growth of Cosmos and a great old web three environment. Not kidding, we're scaling walls here and doing it the right way. It's a powerful project. I encourage you to get your eyes on it. Uh, check it out, learn about it. It's doing uh, some great spaces here and interviews lately to explain what they got going on. It's a powerful tool, but the other thing you can do with your AXV tokens, if you did get some of that, is Lunar Space is going on outbid on May 1st, and it'll be the first project launched there, and you will be able to use AXV tokens to purchase LSE so something to think about there but in the meantime plenty of DeFi opportunities with that and zero cool waiting for stickers man it's a good thing i saved some i i will make that a priority there you go uh then you will say you won something all over again 
Um, yes, let me dig up. I know you have your address. Let me dig that up. I'll give you some stickers. I finally got rid of a ton of stickers when I was in LA at the Zen Lab event. Uh, I gave quite a few away there and in my travels. So uh, it was a long time coming. I had those sitting in my office for a while, but I did save some, did hold some back. And zero cool, I certainly do owe you some stickers. All right, circle. We reached a major compliance milestone by completing an SOC 2 type 2 audit under the rigorous standards established by the AICPA. So they are making moves. And, oh, I forgot to pull that up, but uh, Russia is too. But we'll talk about that another time on that. Um, so heading over to this uh, circle story here. Circle marks significant compliance milestone this month. The SOC 2 Type 2 is a rigorous examination conducted by an independent auditor and demonstrates how Circle achieves key information security and technology objectives, as well as the company's effectiveness in safeguarding security, availability, and confidentiality of its systems. Unlike the SOC 2 Type 1 report, which does not include full testing and auditing, the Type 2 represents a higher level of security compliance. All right, so they're making moves indeed. All right. Get into some fun banker stuff, but first we'll take a quick break. If you have any questions or comments or anything you want me to cover, uh, let me know in the comments when I get back. I'll happily jump into that or get you some answers. Um, just a reminder, coreycommunitydow.com. You can head over there to learn more about what we're building here. And I will play a quick video from CAF and be right back. Hello, everyone. Have you heard of smart tokens? Smart tokens are an awesome type of technology built on Corium. Some of the cool features about them are that they are cost-effective, lightweight, programmable, fungible, non-fungible, and have cross-chain functionality. With so many different use cases, from enterprise-grade solutions to everyday decentralized users, no matter how big or small, Corium's got you covered. Here are some examples of what smart tokens can be used for. Neobanking, CBDCs, stable coins, tokenized securities and stocks, soulbound tokens, interactive NFTs, programmable money, peer-to-peer -peer secure messaging, wrapped cryptocurrencies, tokenized real estate, transparent voting, real-world assets, and ISO 222 compliance. With smart tokens, the possibilities are endless. Try them today and put the power in your hands. Corium Community DAO, empowering tomorrow together, today. All right, we're back. We're back. And I don't know, should put some background music on. We're going to get into some boring banking stuff here. But uh, for those of you who want to hang out for that, not too much of it, but uh, it is relevant. Like I said at the start, our financial system's changing. Many of us are investing in projects and rails to be part of that. But we do have to be wary of you know what the big picture might hold for that if you're in a country as corrupt as Canada, at least anyways. Uh, I know some of you out there have it better than us. But uh, just things that we have to be concerned about here for sure is what these bankers are up to. And you see the Bank of International, for International Settlements, the BIS, says the Basel Committee is 50, why it was set up, what does it do, and how is it working for a safer and more resilient banking system for all. To learn more, check out the Basel Framework and Core Principles, the third of four explainer videos. It's not going to work on, on here, I'm sure of that, but fear not. We have another story from the BIS to talk about here also. And that is what they're calling the Finternet. 
is a vision of the future financial system with multiple interconnected financial ecosystems, much like the internet. So they hashtag fintech tokenization unified ledger. So we'll dive into that real quick here, not too, too bad. But the focus here advances in digital technology have transformed people's lives in recent decades, but large swaths of the financial system are stuck in the past. Many transactions still take days to complete and rely on time consuming clearing messaging and settlement systems, physical paper trails. Improving the functioning of the financial system is thus an important public policy objective but building a financial fit for the future requires a vision for what we want to achieve. We propose the concept of Finternet as a vision of the future financial system, multiple financial ecosystems interconnected with each other, much like the internet. The Finternet would be designed to empower individuals and businesses by placing them at the center of their financial lives. Unified ledgers are a promising vehicle to turn this vision into reality. Grounded on digital first approach and leveraging tokenization, unified ledgers would improve existing financial transactions, but also make entirely new financial products and transactions possible. We describe the economic rationale for the Finternet, as well as its required technical, regulatory, and legal building blocks. In addition, we lay out eight fundamental design considerations that we feel should be a core part of the future financial system. We identify three necessary components, an efficient economic and financial architecture, the application of cutting edge digital technology, and a robust legal and governance framework. Unified ledgers are a promising vehicle to deliver on all three, in particular by bringing together multiple financial assets in a single venue, they could vastly reduce the need for lengthy messaging and clearing processes, thereby delivering a more efficient and reliable services for users. All right, so um, just keeping an eye, like I said, what they're doing. This paper provides a blueprint for how key technical characteristics like interoperability, verifiability, and programmability, immutability, finality, evolve, evolvability, modularity, scalability, security, and privacy can be incorporated, and how varied governance norms can be embedded. Delivering this vision requires a proactive collaboration between public authorities and private sector institutions. This paper serves as a call for action for these entities to establish a strong foundation. This would pave the way for a user-centric, unified, and universal financial ecosystem brought into the digital era that is inclusive, innovative, participatory, accessible, and affordable, and leaves no one behind. Almost sounds like the uh, lawyer from Seinfeld wrote that closing there, but uh, I think you get what the point is there. All right, and maybe I should have spent more time on this thread instead of the last one, but uh, I really encourage anybody that looks at playing with DeFi and some of the tools that are available to you, such as options, derivatives, uh, it's, a tricky place to be if you don't know what you're doing. But Panos here from Minotos, uh, he wrote a book on finance and he has got a great thread here on option contracts and explaining calls and puts and how all that works. Uh, really encourage you to check that out if you are considering playing in this area and need to learn about it. It'd give you a great, great start on some things that you have to be aware of and watch out for. And then you can build on that knowledge base from there before you get your finances involved. All right. So, but this is question here. Some people will ask, why not simply buy the asset directly? Why, while you could simply buy the asset, you would have direct exposure to the assets price risk up to its entire principal. When buying a call, however, the risk is capped at the premium paid to purchase an option. Example, you expect XRP price to increase in the next 30 days. So you buy an XRP call option with a strike price of 70 cents. Let's say that the one contract covers 1000 XRP. 
with a strike price of 70 cents and expires in one month. To buy that contract, you have to pay a premium, which is determined by several factors, the strike price, expiration date, etc. And this goes to the seller's pocket. So let's say the premium is $10 per contract. If within a month, the price of XRP increases to let's say $1, then you can exercise a contract and your net profit of $290. He's got the calculations there, you can figure that out. You paid $10 and earned 300. If the market price is less than the strike price, 70 cents, then you do not do anything and you simply lose the $10, the premium you paid and let the contract expire. All right, so put options, that's on the bearer side of things. Uh, but like I said, he's got a ton of great charts and explainers and uh, he's got some option protocols uh, that you can take a look at. You can see the DeFi options landscape. So I have not uh, played with probably any of these from what I can see. Uh, yeah, I can definitely say that. I have not played with any of these, so can't recommend or suggest what to do with that. But uh, like I said, if this is an area that you're thinking about utilizing, especially with recent amendments on the XRP ledger, um, head over to Panos's page there, always providing a ton of value for that. And that reminded me, uh, we didn't check in with the amendments today to see what's going on there. Yeah, as you can see, cross change bridge, digital identifier, still nothing happened. Digital identifier pulled back one, in fact, here recently, as we mentioned the other day. And uh, we're waiting for those new ones that are being talked about to arrive here soon. All right, I'll check back in with comments, see if there's anything going on there. Nope, looks pretty quiet. Late night for everybody. Appreciate all the support on the channel. And um, I think we will wind things up. Nobody has any questions. We'll shut her down for today. We've got a busy week ahead. We've got the Bitcoin halving coming up here on Friday. We're going to be likely doing a live stream here with special guests. I will uh, officially announce that once I got the time confirmed, probably tomorrow. And uh, again, another exciting podcast coming up this weekend, the Super Ledger podcast. And that's right, I wanted to dig up. Uh, Zero Cools, awesome podcast image before we go. So let's see if I can find it here. All right. Uh, I think it's pretty close to the top of my page here. There we go. Yeah, indeed. There we go. All right. Bravo, Zero Cool. That was a great super ledger podcast image you put up there and um i'd like to find that on a t-shirt here soon is what i was thinking so you and i got to talk about that got you some stickers to send out but um another thing i am working on just have a lot going on here last little while and and in the next couple weeks here in fact too i'm on the road again doing some travel for some family business uh this weekend to southern bc and uh or no northern bc yeah northern not southern um don't even know where i'm going these days but yeah so a lot going on but uh, i am getting ready i have a few more nfts that i'm if i can't gather them up i'm just going to abandon them in in the prize pool but uh we have the prizes to give away for the 1000 subscribers uh, that has not fell off my radar completely just uh, been a time thing really to gather up uh, a lot of these NFTs to get ready to distribute them because uh, once I do give them away, I don't want to have to people to wait to get them. So um, I think I'm just going to go with what I got here soon. When I was in LA, picked up the skateboard from Levi from Epic Creations. So that that's ready to hand out. So we're going to do that here very soon, likely within the next week to two weeks. Um, 
and uh yeah it'd be nice just to offload that get it off the to-do list because it's a it's been a big task uh got a lot of cool nfts to give away some of them quite valuable um so yeah this is going to be nice to thank a lot of my early supporters those of you that got your entries in that week of videos uh way back when in december i will be entering your guys' names in for the prize and i got enough nft prizes there will be some secondary and third prizes there too probably also so i uh, just want to get all these thank yous off the the list and out of these wallets and uh we'll start on the on the next project as far as giving away some fun stuff to the community uh, until then lots to look forward to about to drop the first newsletter for the core community dow baby has been working hard with me on that really excited to get that out uh there's going to be some value in there i hope much like these other formats that we're trying to get the message out so i do want to thank everybody for supporting these efforts got a great community here great people and i appreciate every, each and every one of you and we will talk to you real soon peace and prosperity to you all i'm going to sign out with late again we'll we'll take on howdy neighbor this time instead see if i can get that up here there we go uh no i don't have howdy neighbor here huh i thought i did well we're gonna go with i'm sure it's a great song anyways thanks everybody But it won't stay Where there is a will There must be a way Me a fi win Come what me Pass my hands every day I pray Now nah, I can lose Cause me not confuse Every time positivity me choose So many open doors Support from me, yeah. Tunes for you, climb up the chart. Destiny create me part. Remain humble, don't exalt. Black down life rough. We can't do too much. We have till COVID up. A big dance, we have us. Make sure you prepare yourself. Cause when the clock strikes 12, things get dark. Dark start dark. You are the ball out hell. So many open doors, it's hard to ignore, every year was my year.